So now we'll look at the pressure effects on solubility. So how does, how does pressure affect solubility? Um, so in general, the solubility of gases, gases are going to be much more affected by pressure than, um, than solids or liquids. So in general, uh, if, you increase the, um, if you increase the pressure, so this is what this, this graph is showing here, if you increase the, the partial pressure of a gas, then you're going to increase the solubility. So this graph is showing solubility versus partial pressure. Um, and if you increase the pressure, you increase the solubility. Um, so that's good. Also, if you compare the, the molar masses of these compounds, of these you know, compounds molecules, um, the as you in, larger molecules, so if you increase in the, um, the the molar mass, you're going to increase the strength of the London dispersion forces, which will also um, increase the solubility. All right, so higher solubility um, for bigger mo molecules, and um, Yep. So if you increase the pressure, you increase the solubility. And you can calculate that using Henry's Law. So here's Henry's Law, solubility. Uh, and when we're talking about solubility, we're really talking about the molar concentration, uh, you know, moles over liters. We'll talk more about concentrations in a little bit in the next section. So you're talking about molar concentration, um, or any concentration, but we'll mostly see it as moles per liter. K is just a constant. That's a Henry's Law constant. And then um, the partial pressure of the, of the gas above the liquid. So a sample problem here look, looks just like this. I calculate the concentration of carbon dioxide. So concentration, really the solubility. How much of this can I dissolve in a certain volume of my solvent? So this is my solute. How much of this can I, can I dissolve? Um, so calculate the concentration of carbon dioxide in a soft drink after the bottle is open and it equilibrates at 25 degrees Celsius. We don't really care about the temperature right now. The, the, the constant is temperature dependent, but we don't have to worry about that. Um, this is what the partial pressure is of uh, carbon dioxide, and then the Henry's Law constant for carbon dioxide and water at this temperature um, is here. So this is our K, right? So you might read through these problems and you're like, oh, there's a lot of words, I don't know where to start. Uh, look for the numbers, uh, try to figure out what they give you, and then what, what, you know, what are they asking for? So they give you the partial pressure. They tell you here the partial pressure of um, carbon dioxide, so that's that P. So, here. so we have here P is what p is uh, 3.0 times 10 to the negative 4 atmospheres so always check your units and make sure uh, all your units match um, the henry's law constant k here is just 3.4 times 10 to the negative 2 and it's the units are moles per liter times atmosphere so all I want to do now is multiply them in order to find the concentration, to find that solubility. You know, how many moles can I dissolve per liter? Um, so my solubility is just the K. That's the 3.4 times 10 to the negative 2. Oops, times 10 to the negative 2. Uh, moles per liter times atmosphere. All right, times the pressure. 3.0 times 10 to the negative 4 atmospheres. Now my atmospheres are going to cancel and my units are going to just be moles over liter, which is just a molar concentration. So all you have to do is multiply those two numbers together. Um, you get 1.0 times 10 to the negative 5 moles over liters or molar concentration. All right, and that's our solubility. So we can dissolve 1.0 times 10 to the negative 5 moles per 1 uh, liter of solution. And there we go. All right, so real-world application. So when, when are you ever going to use this one? Have you ever seen this before? Um, the fact that gases will dissolve um, at, at a, greater at, a, um, at increasing the pressure. So if you increase the pressure, you increase the solubility of the gas. If you've ever been scuba diving, if you've ever gone scuba diving, um, you, you may have uh, you may have noticed a few things. Um, you can't just you know, go down to the bottom and then just push right off to, up to the top and, and, and you'll be fine. You might get something called the bends or decompression sickness. Um, and so what's happening is as you go underwater, um, the pressure is going to increase. And I think it's I think it's like one atmosphere every 25 feet. So you're you know normally at sea level you're you're under one atmosphere pressure um, so as you go into the water if you, you know you can really increase that pressure um, pretty quickly 
Um, so as you increase the pressure, right, as you're going under the water, more gases are going to start uh, dissolving more in your blood. So in the, in the problem, the one that you really have to watch out for is the, the nitrogen. So more nitrogen is going to be dissolved in your blood at, um, at higher pressure. So when you go underwater, you get more nitrogen in your blood. And so when you come up to the surface, you have to make sure that you go up slowly and you kind of equilibrate at every, uh, every, every few feet. Um, and so you, you kind of like degas, you, you adjust to that new pressure and some of the gas comes out of the solution. If you come up too quickly, it's going to start bubbling right out of solution and then those bubbles can cause you a lot of problems. Um, and that's, that's called the bends or decompression sickness. That's when you can get, um, that, can, that can actually kill you. So you want to equilibrate at every new um, pressure level.